Am I the asshole for refusing to punish my son for calling his classmates food weird? I, female 32, got a private text this morning from the mother of my son's male seven classmate. She told me that apparently my son has been calling her daughter's traditional lunch weird and things as such. And apparently that is making her daughter feel uncomfortable and insecure. She asked me to please talk to my son about being more sensitive and respectful so her daughter doesn't feel excluded. Now, I feel for this woman as a fellow mother. No one wants to see their child feeling sad, but overcoming insecurities is a big part of growing up. Additionally, I thought it was ridiculous of her to criticize my son, a seven-year-old, for making relatively innocuous and curious comments about food that is not familiar to him. He is at a curious age and is discovering the world, and I refuse to try and limit him and shut him down for not having the emotional sensitivity of an adult. Politely, I told that mother that I was sorry for her daughter struggling with insecurities, and I found some online parenting articles (gasps) about building your child's confidence to send to her so she could use some tips to help her daughter out. She replied and said I was acting completely shamelessly and disgracefully and I am not able to text her anymore. Am I the asshole? I asked my boyfriend for alone time and he told me to pack my stuff and leave for good. My boyfriend, 29 male, and I, 30 female, have been dating since last summer. I live alone in an apartment in downtown DC and he lives alone in a house in Annapolis about 40 minutes away. Pre-quarantine, we did well with splitting weekends between the two places. Once days closed for COVID, we decided it made most sense for me to temporarily move in slash stay with him in a bigger space with a yard for the dogs. As you might imagine, it had its ups and downs. We were getting a crash course in living together in a space that wasn't really mine at all, having lots of important conversations, enjoying evenings cooking together and having wine while watching shows together. We've also been irritable due to drastic changes in our daily routines. I've continued to work full-time from home, plus overtime due to an even busier schedule, while he's only working half-day once a week. He is bored. I am stressed with work and finding it difficult to decompress. I'm used to slash need quiet time to myself to recharge, and he likes a noisy household. TV's always on, music on top of that, chattering constantly about sports or jazz statistics, or things only of interest to him. I tried saying I'm going upstairs to read, or I just like some quiet time to myself and it bugs him that I don't want to do the things that he wants. I find myself becoming more snappy and short-tempered from constantly feeling drained, which isn't fair to him. Last night, he wanted to watch the NFL draft, so I made plans to FaceTime my girlfriends upstairs while he did that. I'm used to weekly girls' nights and miss them as they're also my primary support network. I heard him downstairs complaining to his dog that I never want to hang out with him. After FaceTiming, I went down and sat on the sofa with him and said, Hey! I heard you talking to the dog. I came to hang out. How are your team's picks doing? He was irritable and replied, Ugh, it was quiet until you came down. I'm feeling like I can't win. All right, getting to the point now. I hadn't been to my apartment in over three weeks and needed to go check on it. It's not a building, it's in a row house. And pick up some prescriptions I couldn't have transferred. We were originally going to go together, but seeing this irritation with each other, I suggested I just go alone and take a night or so to myself to recharge and come back. This morning when I grabbed some necessities for a night to myself, my laptop because I have to work over the weekend, some underwear, face moisturizer, he got upset and said I might as well take all my stuff and not bother coming back. I tried to talk through why it was so all or nothing for him. He said I clearly didn't want to spend time with him or be around him, so I can just go home for good and we can resume dating when the states open back up. He actually backed up the remainder of my stuff and took it out to my car for me. I just wanted to read in silence, get my medications, water my plants, sleep in my own bed alone for a night, watch my own trashy TV shows without interruption. And now I think my relationship is over. I'm feeling frustrated that I attempted to handle this in a productive and proactive way and somehow screwed up. Here is how I get over my exes and how I help my friends get over their exes as well. Number one, and this is gonna shock a lot of people, I don't believe in revenge. Like I'm never gonna go out of my way to get revenge on somebody. Have I done it in the past before spiritual awakening? Livy? yeah I have. I have done some crazy shit in the past to get revenge and let me tell you, it never feels that fucking good. I feel like with age, I learned what feels good is like knowing karma is gonna bite that fucker in the asshole. Like, I'm never going to go out of my way to get revenge anymore. Because there's just something so satisfying that's like, okay, you're not in my life anymore and that fucking sucks. You're going to have to sit on the sidelines and watch my success 
and you don't get to be a part of it. And that fucking sucks. Like my, you losing my energy is better than any revenge I could ever come up with. That's better than me fucking your brother. That you no longer having contact with me is gonna hurt worse than anything I could even brew in my crazy little brain. My friend was telling me, she's like, I have a funeral for like my exes. She's like, and I think it's a Tink's thing. I think Tink said that to have like a funeral for them. Well, I, d this is the Livy way of doing that. I have a full funeral for them in my head and I literally act as if they died. I'm not checking your Instagram. I'm not doing anything. I'm not reaching out. I'm not doing any of that. Like I have killed this person and the hope of them in my brain. But when I've done this with my friends, like I literally sound like a fucking psychopath. I'm like, kill them in your head. But when my best friend was going through uh, her breakup, she was like, I just like, I really am gonna miss the dog. And I'm like, we gotta have a funeral for the dog in your head right now. And she was like, no, I can't do that. I'm like, gotta let go of everybody. So not only do I have a funeral for like the person in my head, but his family, like anyone I was close to in, his life, you're all dead. I also mentioned earlier like killing the hope of somebody. And what I mean by that is just like the hope that you guys are gonna get back together or like the hope, like there's just hope that this will all work out kind of thing, kill it. A lot of times we hold on to potential and hope and not actually that person. Just like you're honestly probably still in love with the potential that this person could have been. Well, guess what? He never fucking amounted to it. Like the amazing potential you saw for him, he never did it, let it go. Or even like the hope that things can get back to what they used to be or you can forget that he cheated or just like you're holding on to the hope that things can get better and be better. But like live in the fucking reality, bitch. It probably is not going to. Go to bar two. Another thing that helps me get over my exes or like a breakup is focusing 100% on myself. We neglect ourselves a lot of times in relationships. So I think it's extra important during a breakup to like really amp up the self-love and the self-care. Also, I feel like a great reminder that helped me get through my breakup. Like every time I wanted to go back to that fucker, I was like, he doesn't know your worth. Like if he's gonna treat you so shitty, he doesn't know your worth and you spent, like I literally spent six years of my life learning my worth and my value and like working on my self love. Why the fuck would I let some whack ass motherfucker come in who doesn't know my worth and keep that person in my life when I would, like single me that didn't love that person would have never let that happen. It just came down to like, yeah, I love this person, but like I love myself more. And like, I have to walk away because of how much self love I've worked for, for myself. As soon as you show me you don't know my self worth, you're out of the fucking picture. Because I worked too hard to let a whack ass motherfucker come in and just throw that all away. Like, fuck you. Another thing that helps me get over my exes, no contact. Listen. I know it sucks. And you're probably gonna find every excuse in the book to continue to talk to him like, oh, I just wanna see how his family's doing. Fuck his family, okay? Fuck his family. It doesn't matter anymore. Like, put yourself first. Really, the only way you're truly gonna get over somebody is no contact. Like, this person's not in your life anymore. Stop holding on to it, let it go. And that's a day by day thing. Like, there's no rush into healing. It could take two weeks, it could take two months, it could take two years, it could take 25 years. As long as you're committed to fucking healing, you're going to heal. I do think it's really important. I don't remember what the fuck I was gonna say. I literally just had it in my head, like what? Oh, okay, I think it's really important to give yourself grace and like give yourself patience. There is, like there's no need to rush anything and I know it sucks and you wanna get over this fucker as quick as possible, but just like give yourself time to feel all the feelings too. Like I'm big on not numbing your feelings, like feel those fucking feelings, okay? Also, this person wasn't meant for you and I know that's hard to wrap your head around, but that just means there's someone else out there who is meant for you. And you get to fall in love with that person again and you can experience a healthy love because now you know what you deserve or not even just like a healthy love but the love that is meant for you is going to be such a beautiful thing scrub it up dub these fucking lips day by day but don't remember i mean what i mean it's day by day but remember you're not alone so many people are also going through the same exact thing you're feeling and just give yourself time to heal, but do better for yourself, babes, because you know you deserve that. And if you don't know, now you fucking know. You deserve a lot better.